and welcome to another gluten free and yeast free baking video how are we doing today today I'm going to be making gluten free Tanya Burr vanilla cookies I really really love the chocolate ones and just had to make a vanilla flavour so just to let you know my dog Magic is fast asleep on the floor over there and snoring and my neighbours are currently having some work done in their house so that could be background noise you hear during this video but to continue with this video you will be needing the following equipment scales, measuring spoons cooling rack, two baking trays or cookie sheets, whatever you have access to, baking paper, spray oil, a large mixing bowl, an ice cream scoop, tablespoons, teaspoons, whatever you're going to use to take the cookie dough over to your baking sheets, and a wooden spoon or an electric hand whisk with a spatula. You will also be needing the following ingredients. 100 grams of butter softened at room temperature, I like to use lacto-free butter. 150 grams of caster sugar, half a medium sized egg beaten, I will show you how to do this in a second, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and 150 grams of gluten free self raising flour. Let's -a go! So as promised I'm going to show you how to half an egg, so what I've done is put an empty bowl on top of my scales and measured that to zero, so it's currently showing zero. I'm going to tip all of the egg in, using my spatula to make sure it all goes in. You'll notice I'm using different scales, that's because my previous scales have stopped working for some reason and I'm not very happy about it. So that is showing at 52 grams. So half of 50 is 25 and half of 2 is 1, so that's 26. So we move this bowl, put our original bowl back on, put that to zero, even though it was but I wanted to make sure. And we are now going to put the egg in until it reaches 26 grams. Little by little, even though that was a lot. There we go, 26. And that's it, it's as simple as that. I do like that what you can do with the extra egg is actually make it in an omelette, add it to an original omelette or something, so there are extra uses you can use for the egg, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So now that that is all done, measure out all of your ingredients so that they're completely ready for you to use, and then preheat your oven too. 200 degrees C on a conventional oven, 180 degrees C on a fan oven, or gas mark 6. Now that that is all done, grab your two cookie sheets or baking trays, whatever you have access to, your spray oil and your baking paper. So now that we've got our spray oil, our baking paper and our cookie sheets or baking sheets, the first thing we're going to do is measure out how big our baking paper needs to be. So just simply move it along. Now you can use scissors if you want, but I've lost my pair so I'm just going to tear it. we go, that's one, and do the same with the next one. That's two. And now what we're going to do is just give our cooking sheets, or cookie sheets, sorry, or baking paper, just a quick spritz with oil. So it's easier for, when I find space, so it's easier for the baking paper to stay stuck, st stuck down for you. So now that that's all done, set this lot off to the side until you're ready to bake. So now that you've done all that prep work, you now have to start making the cookies. And the first thing we have to do in making the cookies is mixing together the butter and the sugar. So, let's put all of the butter in in one big go. And now sprinkle on our caster sugar. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Get all of it. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. There we go. And this is why we scrape down the sides so that it all goes in there. I really picked the day to film when they're working outside, didn't I? Now mix these together until they are light and fluffy. Now that that is done, grab your half an egg. 
Now that you've got your half an egg, just tip it in in one big go. And now mix together until well combined. Now that that is all mixed and looking so fluffy, it is incredible, grab your gluten-free self-raising flour and your vanilla extract. Now that we've got our vanilla extract and our gluten-free self-raising flour, what we're going to do is add our vanilla extract in one big go to our mixing bowl. And now we're going to mix in the vanilla till it is fully combined with the mixture and adding a little bit at a time we are going to mix in our flour until it is well combined. Now we're just going to scrape down our vanilla bowl one more time to make sure all of that vanilla-y goodness is in there. There we go. And we're going to do the same with our flour bowl. Now I'm losing grip of this. And now scraping down the sides of your mixing bowl just to make sure all the mixture's together. And now we're going to mix one final time for good luck. And now that that is done, grab your cookie sheets or baking trays, your spray oil and whatever you're going to use to get these cookies onto your cookie sheets. Now that you've got your ice cream scoop or whatever you're using to put your cookie dough onto your cookie sheets or baking trays, your cookie sheets or baking trays and your spray oil, the first thing we're going to do is give the cookie sheets a quick spritz of oil, just so that the cookies don't really stick to the baking paper. Well, that's the first one anyway, I don't have the room to do two. And what we're going to do is on this one, we're going to do three little ice cream balls of the cookie dough. Very fast spaced out, but with enough room on the cookie sheet to cook well, because they spread quite a lot. Two and three. And now for the next one. Doesn't that just look like vanilla ice cream? Doesn't it just? Hold on a second. Another quick, oh, flatten it out a bit. Another quick spritz of oil. One. Right, now what I'm going to do is just move this all in. 
so you don't lose any more mixture than you have to to the washing up. Oh, I can make one more. There we go. And I'll put this one over here. Okay. Probably not the best placement, but I didn't realise I'd have enough for another one. So, now that that is all done, place your cookies into your preheated oven for 11 minutes. It doesn't sound a long time, and just so you know, they will not look cooked when you take them out of the oven. But what will happen is they will shrink and then they will become chewy. That's what does it. So what we're going to do is cook them for 11 minutes, as I have said. We're going to take them out of the oven at that exact time, leave them to cool on their cookie sheets or baking trays for 10 minutes, and then carefully transfer them onto a cooling rack for a further 20 minutes. And that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description, including the recipe for these lovely cookies and my shop where you will be able to buy all of the flour and equipment you could need for this recipe. If you do make these at home, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and use the hashtag BakingWithVicky, which I will put in between my hands. Let me know in the comments anything you'd like to see me make, gluten or yeast-free, as I do both. And finally, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time. Bye! Well, better try these, because it just smells amazing. No wonder these are my dad's favourite things. <laughs>